Welcome to another example of integration by parts. The integration by parts formula is given here, where the given integral would be the integral of u dv, which is equal to uv minus the integral of v du. So the idea is we let part of the integrand be equal to u, so that differential u would be simpler. So once we find u, we differentiate to find du. The remaining integrand would be equal to dv, once we identify dv, we integrate to find v. But again, normally we select u, so the differential u would be simpler. But looking at our integral, if we let u equal e to the power of four x, du is not simpler. And if we let u equal sine two x, again, du is not simpler. So it's not obvious what we should let u be equal to. So let's go ahead and try to let u be equal to the exponential part, or e to the power of four x, and see how this works out. So again, we're letting u equal e to the power of four x. So now we'll differentiate to find du, which would be e to the four x times four times dx, or four e to the power of four x dx. Which means then dv must be sine two x dx. So now we'll integrate to find v. Notice how this would require substitution. Since we've already used u, let's use w. If w equals two x, then dw equals two dx. So if we divide both sides by two, notice how if we write this in terms of w, we have an extra factor of one half. So the integral of sine two x with respect to x would be negative one half cosine two x. Notice that differential v would be sine two x dx. And now we can apply integration by parts. The given integral is equal to u times v minus the integral of v du. Well u times v would be negative one half e to the four x cosine two x minus the integral of v du, we have negative one half times four, that's negative two, so this will be plus two times the integral of e to the four x cosine two x dx. Notice how this integral here isn't much different than the original integral. So let's go ahead and apply integration by parts again. So again, we'll let u be equal to e to the power of four x so differential u would be four e to the four x dx. dv would be cosine two x dx. This again requires substitution, so we'll have an extra factor of one half when we integrate. So v would be one half sine two x. And now we'll apply integration by parts again on this integral here. So we'll have plus two and then times uv minus the integral of v du. So uv would be one half e to the four x sine two x and then minus the integral of v du Notice we'd have one half times four, that's gonna be two, which we'll go ahead and factor out. And then we have e to the four x sine two x dx. Now it may appear we're going in circles here. Notice how this integral here is the same integral that we're trying to evaluate. So in this case, what we can do is isolate this integral on one side of the equation and then solve for that integral. So for the next step, let's go ahead and clear these parentheses. So we'd have plus one e to the four x sine two x, but then minus four times the integral of e to the power of four x sine two x dx. So again, on the left side, we have one of these integrals, and over here we have minus four of them. So we're gonna add four of these integrals to both sides which would give us five times the integral of e to the power of four x 
sine two x dx equals, let's go ahead and put this positive term first, e to the four x sine two x minus one half e to the four x cosine two x. So now we can simply multiply both sides of the equation by one fifth and then add our constant of integration in order to find our antiderivative. And let's go ahead and do this on the next slide. So again, now we'll just multiply both sides of the equation by one fifth and also add the constant of integration. So we have the original integral of e to the power of four x sine two x dx is equal to one fifth e to the four x sine two x minus one tenth e to the four x cosine two x plus c. This would be our antiderivative. I hope you found this explanation helpful.